Today, I'm gonna show you how to start a smart home, or maybe you've already got one and you don't know what to buy next. I'm gonna show you in today's video. I'm gonna cover what products or devices you should be purchasing. Before we jump into it, I wanna introduce myself. My name's Ian, and I started in telehomes because I wanted to be able to help people like you get a better understanding of how to have a smartphone. Or maybe you already have one and you just wanna get better at it and you, because you wanna understand more. Well, you're in the right place. First, we're gonna talk about a basic understanding of a smart home. I assume you already have one of those. If not, I've got a video. I'll link it down in this description below as to what a smart home really is. So let's jump past that right now. In today's video, we're gonna cover what products or devices you should be purchasing. Now, this by no means is a which one is better than that one or which brand is better. Really, my goal here is to give you a pathway of devices you can implement into your home that are going to complement each other in the best way possible. This is going to be a general overview of these different devices. I will dive in and explain a little bit about what each one of them does, but I'm not going to give you a huge in-depth of all the details and of all the things that you can do with these devices. We'll break each individual one down in later videos. And of course, remember, they are not required to be purchased in this order. This is just a if I could redo my smart home, this is the order in which I would purchase devices. Now the first device and the biggest thing a lot of times is gonna be our voice assistants. These are things like Alexa or HomePod or even Google Home. The biggest difference between these is the ecosystem that you wanna operate into. If you choose Apple, their HomePod for instance, they have a very user-friendly and very eloquently designed interface for you to be able to run your automations and routines. Alexa, on the other hand, her interface isn't the easiest to use or the most well-designed, though I have found overall more devices work with the Alexa ecosystem than with the HomePod or the Google. Voice Assistant is not required to be able to move forward in your smart home journey, though what I've noticed is the most common time that people interact with a smart home is through their voice assistant, whether it be turning lights on, turning lights off, or even changing the temperature. A lot of times people already have them in their home, and from there what you start doing is expanding them to multiple rooms. For instance, I have like seven Alexas throughout my house. Some of the ecosystems like Alexa or Google Home have screen versions like the Echo Show. What's really awesome is when you elevate to having a doorbell or cameras, whenever these have motion detected, you can actually have them automatically call up whatever camera or doorbell might have detected that. And that's something we'll talk about in the future. To recap voice assistants, again, this step really heavily determines which ecosystem you wanna utilize. I personally, again, use the Alexa one, even though I'm a huge Apple person and most of the devices in my home are Apple products, I've just found that the Alexa ecosystem is so much e easier to utilize. Now, these next two devices could fall two different ways for you. We're gonna talk about light switches and light bulbs. You can do these interchangeably and it's really heavily gonna be dependent on how your house is set up. In a lot of cases, some of the older homes in the United States actually have light switches that operate an outlet for you. So you end up having to plug a lamp into it, so you need a bulb in that lamp. There's two ways you can do it. You could set it up on a light switch or you could put the bulb in there. It's really gonna come down to personal preference at that point. Before we get too far off the rails, let's really dive into light switches and then we're gonna talk about light bulbs. Now, I personally prefer light switches as the first product that you're gonna purchase after your voice assistant if you chose to purchase one. The reason why light switches are a little bit more of my preference are because of how much more versatile and how much cheaper it's gonna be in the long run for you. Whenever you have multiple lights in a bedroom, office, or living room, which is very common, you're gonna to need to purchase one bulb for each one of those if you go the light bulb route. Then, whenever you turn them on or off using your voice, you actually have to give a command for each individual one unless you group them together, which in my case sometimes can be very confusing. I have four can lights and I have a fan ceiling light in my living room that has three additional bulbs. That would be seven bulbs that I would have to purchase to be able to operate my living room lights. They're on different switches and I like to operate them independently. 
Generally, I only turn on the can lights. I like the lighting a little bit better. So I have a light switch on the can light. Then I have a separate switch that runs the fan and the light. Now there's two switches on there and they're both on a dimmer. There are multiple different styles of light switches that you could end up purchasing. You could get ones that don't dim if you don't want dimming capabilities. I tend to like the dimming capability because I like daylight colored lights. I'm not a big fan of the cool white because in Alaska, it gets very dark here in the winter time and I like that daylight feeling in my house. Now, the other reason why light bulbs and light switches tend to be the first item that I encourage people to purchase is because of how frequently we use them. A lot of us have children or maybe we're just forgetful ourselves and tend to leave lights on. What's really awesome is you can start setting up automations through your ecosystem that automatically turn off your lights at certain times of day, or maybe you leave the house and lights turn off. You can also set it so that when you return home, lights will turn on for you very easily. And you can even set it up so that these parameters only happen at certain times of day. One of the very first things that I set up was the ability to have my lights automatically turn on during sunset. So around the sunset time, which here in Alaska changes frequently based on the little bit of light we get in the winter and the large amount of light we get in the summertime, I don't wanna have to constantly change what time those lights come on. So I just said, turn on during sunset and they turn on. I have a lamp that runs on a bulb that turns on in my living room. It gives a very nice ambient style lighting in there. The other thing I have turn on very often is my exterior lights on the front of my house. I wanna make sure people are aware that I'm home. The other time that it can still turn on is when I'm not home. Family and I go on vacation, we're able to have lights turn on automatically for us. As I also mentioned, if you have a fan light combo, which a lot of times happens, you would end up having to get bulbs and then you'd still need to get a switch for the fan. What's really awesome is you can get a light switch that operates the light and the fan all in one. They can have dimming capabilities so you can change the speed of the fan as well as the brightness of the light all in one switch for you. One of the most frequent things that I utilize my light switches for are when I forget to turn off the kitchen lights when we're watching a movie or the living room lights when we're watching a movie. I sit down on the couch, I kick my feet up, my kids are on my lap, I got my snack and I look up and realize the lights are still on. It is so easy to turn the lights on and off without having to actually utilize the light switch with a simple command. This is why having a voice assistant first and then moving to light switches is the easiest steps you can do. It really helps open the door for your smart home capabilities and teaches you some very basic skills and automations and voice commands to be able to operate a smart home. The next product I would encourage you to purchase are light bulbs if you chose not to go the light switch route. Now there are sometimes situations where you need light bulbs over light switches. For instance, my bedside table has a lamp on it and that lamp has a bulb in it. Now I could have gone the option of putting in it on an outlet, but what I like the bulb for is so that I can dim that light for me. A lot of times these light bulbs are 800 lumens, which honestly is very, very bright. So what I end up doing is leaving that light at like one to 10%. And so it's so much easier to turn that light on and off with my voice than it is to have and have it dim as well than it would be to have it on some type of switch otherwise, because then I wouldn't have that dimming capability. The other concern about light bulbs is a lot of times they don't work if they're on a smart switch. Just recently, actually, my wife and I were trying to figure out why the pendant lights over our kitchen counter were not working. And finally, I looked inside the app and noticed that they were offline. And when I asked her, because I was sitting on the couch, if the light switch was on, somebody had flipped the light switch off. It was probably our toddler. She likes to flip the light switches. She's finally been able to reach them, so she's learning how to flip them off. And this is one of the biggest struggles to light bulbs over light switches. Once that switch is turned off, those lights no longer work. Whereas with a light switch, there's always power to it. And when you have guests that come over, they can still operate those light switches as normal and it doesn't cut the power and you don't lose the capability to have them function as that as intended with a smart home. Recently as well, I saw somebody that was asking to use LED light strips on an outlet and they were wondering why their light strip kept losing its presets whenever they would turn off the outlet on the smart outlet. 
Well, I explained to him that there is constant power needing to be required to these smart lights if you want them to operate the way they should operate. So you can't actually turn the power off to them in a lot of cases. So this is why you either wanna go with a light switch or a light bulb. You can't really operate both of them on the same. Now there are some new technologies coming out in the market where we're gonna have that capability to be able to have smart bulbs or lights on a smart switch or outlet. Though right now it's just, it's too much to work with and we're trying to get a basic understanding and create a simple and easy to use environment for you. So we're just gonna steer clear of using those. Pick one or the other. Now in some cases, again, you could utilize light switches. In some cases you can utilize light bulbs, but in most cases you're not gonna utilize both of them. Now the next product or device to look at purchasing are something called contact sensors. And if you've ever had a home security system or been to somebody's home, home with a home security system, you're gonna notice these little sensors that are at the top of a door. It's a, usually a bigger one and then you'll have a small one either on the door or the door frame. And so whenever the door opens and closes, they get really close to each other. Now there's a few different operations and automations that can be utilized through these. And I'm gonna cover temperature later on, but I'm gonna to briefly touch on them right now because they can be put on doors, interior and exterior doors, as well as windows. Now, the big reason why I tell you to purchase these third, if we're talking voice assistant, light switch, and or bulb interchangeably, and then contact sensors, is they make them a lot easier to use since you're not solely relying on geocoding, which is the ability for your phone, your home, ecosystem to track where your phone is, whether it's home or not. What contact sensors allow us to do is that whenever you open a door or close a door, a light can turn on or off. Now you can also set those on timers. One of the great places to put these is on a pantry door. If you have a pantry in your kitchen and you open that door and you can't see inside, so you have to flip the switch on, you could put a smart switch on there or bulb and then put the contact sensor on the door so that every time the door opens, the light turns on, and every time the door closes, the light turns off for you. Super simple to do, very easy, very affordable. The other reason why contact sensors are next on the list is because of their affordability. These can range as, as inexpensive as $10, they can go all the way up to $20 and $30. There are multiple features that could be built into them. These are things like temperature, humidity, or even vibration built into these types of smart sensors. What I love about contact sensors is they truly start elevating your home to that automated feeling where you do things and things just automatically happen for you. And it seems like it's so crazy and it's so fancy, but it's really not. It's just as simple as a door opening and closing. Now the drawback to contact sensors is sometimes you have to open or close a door to make it register, which is why it doesn't always function as easily and it's in not all cases necessary. The next device that you're gonna to wanna to purchase for your smart home would be motion sensors. Now there's a difference between a motion sensor and something called a presence sensor, but we're not gonna discuss what those are right now because those presence sensors can get very, very expensive and costly, though it's one of those things where the goal with this is to start creating a foundation for your home and then building upon it so you can replace devices as you want to. Now what's really awesome about motion sensors is, well, they detect motion. So whenever they see motion, they can do something. So what we've already done for us is installed lights into our home. So whenever a motion sensor detects somebody moving, it will turn off or on a light. When you walk into a kitchen, which might not have a door before it, you can have that motion sensor detect motion and turn on the light. Then when it no longer detects motion after a certain amount of time, it could turn the light off for you. This really starts elevating our ability to save money because lights automatically start turning off for us. One of the things I think is really awesome about motion sensors is, is it creates that freedom from having to utilize your voice and further elevates that smart home or automated feel that we're gonna start seeing in our home now. Whenever motion happens, 
things just happen, or the lack of motion, things happen. This is where devices can start getting expensive. Motion sensors sometimes go up into the 20, 30, $40 range, because of what's packed into them or the range at which they're able to detect motion. One of the things I love about motion sensors is they tend to be battery operated so that you can put them just about anywhere in your house to be able to function. Motion sensors can come with a lot of the features that contact sensors also have. These are things like vibration, you can even get them to detect lux, which is the light level in a room, as well as things like temperature and humidity. Now, the next device I encourage people to purchase for their home, and these ones can get fairly expensive at this point, are thermostats. There are a plethora of smart thermostats out on the market. I'm going to touch on the one that I currently utilize, which is Ecobee. I love Ecobee. And part of the reason why is it came with some of the temperature sensors that we're gonna cover as the next device, as well as we've kind of already talked about some of these other devices we can purchase have some of those smart capabilities with temperature included. Now, the reason why thermostats are so important to purchase are because of how much money it can save us. Nobody likes turning up the thermostat or forgetting to turn it down or waking up to a cold house or waking up to a house that's too hot if you're in a climate like that. Thermostats, once you connect them to your ecosystem, can even be controlled through your voice. You can give your ecosystem a command to change the temperature up or down or set it for a certain amount of time. What I've noticed is that it creates a more stable temperature environment in my home with less effort. It's a set it and forget it type of situation, which really makes your home feel smart and automated. Now, the last device that I would encourage you to purchase are temperature and humidity sensors. Now, the reason why these are last is because they're very specific to having thermostats. And a lot of cases too, you can purchase a thermostat that has a temperature sensor included. For instance, my thermostat when I bought them I bought a bundle so that every thermostat I purchased had one temperature sensor in it now my house is a four zone house I have a garage a downstairs a master bedroom and then everything else upstairs on it I only purchased three of them my garage I just didn't care about as much having a smart thermostat in there I don't really mess with the temperature all that much though what's really great about having multiple of these is all of those little sensors could be put in different rooms throughout the house to help balance the temperature. So what the temperature sensors start doing for us is whenever we connect them to our thermostats, they can say, hey, this room is 70 degrees, but this room is 65 degrees and create an average temperature out of them, which will then determine whether that boiler system or furnace system actually does need to be turned on or not. Now the downside to this is sometimes you end up with like my office, which is very hot. I've got multiple computers in here. I've got lots of lights above us that are always on and create and generate a lot of heat. So actually the office creates a higher average temperature in our house, which then causes one of the other rooms, which is a little bit colder to not have as much heat because they the thermostat is going, no, it's warm enough in your house based on the average temperature. I don't need to turn on. The simple fix to this is just to take the sensor out of that room and not allow it to connect and help create that average temperature in that room. I haven't done that yet, but I probably should. Now, the other reason why that I put the temperature and humidity sensors at the end of this list is because the contact sensors as well as the motion sensors tend to sometimes already have these features built in. Now, also, depending on which type of voice assistant you chose to purchase, if you chose to purchase one in the beginning, sometimes even has that capability. The other really cool capability that some of these voice assistants have are the occupancy sensor. I know some of the Alexas that I purchased, I spent a little bit more money on them. I waited until Black Friday and I did buy them on sale. They also have occupancy as well as temperature settings back into them. So I was able to take all of those extra sensors that came with my Ecobee and put them in rooms that either don't have Alexa devices or that I wanted to create a more balanced environment so I could have temperatures throughout the entire house. Every single room in my house has the, I can check the temperature on right now because of those sensors, as well as the amount of Alexas I have built throughout my house. Now, the difficult thing about choosing some of those voice assistants is they get up there in price. 
Though again, if you pay attention to which ones you're purchasing and you plan where you're going to purchase them and put them in your house, you can determine if you need to put a temperature sensor in there or even a contact sensor in there. A couple other bonus tips around what some of these things can do that we're gonna cover in a later video is the security aspect of them. With contact sensors, we're able to put them on windows and doors to be able to determine if a door is open or closed. Same with the window. What it does for us is it will determine if one of them is left open and can tell us if they've been left open. When it's time to go to sleep at night, you don't wanna always leave those open. The other really cool thing you can do with these contact sensors is if a door is opened or window opened for a set amount of time, and maybe it's the middle of summer and you have the AC on and you don't want your AC blowing out the window, you can actually have it shut your thermostat off so that it's not blowing cold air that's going right out the window. This allows for all those kids that leave their bedroom windows open to be told whenever they're left open so that you can make sure they get shut and saves you money. Now in conclusion here, there are a lot of things that we covered in this video and I tried to give a general overview so you have a pathway of what to purchase. And what I will do in the future going forward is we're gonna build out what more of these devices do for you so you have a better understanding of all the different devices and what they're gonna do for you. Oh my gosh, Ian, I don't know where to start. This is how you start. The purpose for these devices is they complement each other very well and help create that foundation to be able to build a really awesome smart home. Again, as you build that smart home, you're gonna learn more, you're gonna feel comfortable doing more and more different automations and routines, which will help you grow your smart home. If you wanna purchase the smart switch that I've designed and that I personally sell, I'm gonna link you directly to my store where you can purchase me. All of those proceeds go to help out this channel so that I can help provide you with the best information and educate you in the best way possible so that you can have an Intel home too. I thank you so much for joining me in today's video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. I would love it if you'd subscribe as well and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the video. Tell me some of the devices that you already have or tell me what your first smart device was. I still haven't had a, the ability to give away this light switch yet. This is one of my personal light switches that I sell and I would love to be able to give it to one of you. If you head over to my Facebook page and you get me to 500 likes, then I will do go ahead and give that away. Or if we hit 500 subscribers on YouTube, we'll also give it away there. Whichever one happens first, I would love to have you subscribe and like the channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me again and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.